If I asked you to name five foods that you must include in a healthy diet, you'd probably say something like fruits, vegetables, nuts, fish, wheat bread, something of that sort. But you'd be forgetting one food that has been linked to a lower risk of heart disease and diabetes. From the title of this video, you can guess what that food is. Ice cream. How could this be possible? How is it that ice cream full of sugar and saturated fat could have any health benefits? To understand the nature of this paradox, we'll have to look and see what the data have to say. And to do that, we'll have to time travel back to the 1980s to when the first of the studies on this topic was done. In 1986, scientists from Harvard sent out surveys to tens of thousands of men as part of the health professionals follow-up study. The purpose of this study was to better understand how what we eat could impact our risks for developing type 2 diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and other chronic illnesses. The men in the study, who were mostly white, middle-aged, and well-off, were followed for about 12 years. As part of this study, they were asked to complete a food frequency questionnaire, which is basically a catalog of different foods and food groups that provide insight into people's dietary habits. Ice cream intake was part of this questionnaire. When researchers analyzed the data on who developed diabetes and who ate ice cream, they found something unexpected that those who ate ice cream two or more times per week were the least likely to develop type 2 diabetes. Unexpected or not, this was a statistically significant finding. Mysteriously, it was left out of the abstract and not really discussed at all in the paper. You'd have to dig really deep into this research paper to even find this data. And it makes you wonder, did the scientists feel conflicted by what they found? Did they think it was a mistake? Were they worried that people would start eating ice cream for breakfast every day? I can't tell you why this wasn't really publicized, but the data has been there from that far back. Now let's move on to the next study. Harvard, in conjunction with Brigham and Women's Hospital, launched the Women's Health Study in 1993. This study, unlike the first one that focused exclusively on men, focused just on women, about 40,000 of them. Like the first study though, the majority of this study's population was white and middle-aged. After observing these women's dietary habits and checking to see who developed diabetes, the scientists found nothing. Up to this point, it seemed to be the case that ice cream could be protective against diabetes for men, but not for women. The next large study to look at the association between ice cream and diabetes came out in 2014. In 2014, a study that was bigger than either of the previous two was published. It actually pulled data from three large studies. The first study is actually the same study I mentioned at the top of this video, the one with the 40,000 men. The second and third studies were the Nurses Health Studies 1 and 2. Together, these studies included over 150,000 women. Over the duration of the study period, 15,000 people developed diabetes. Now, what do you think they found? Was ice cream once again shown to be beneficial for health? Yes, it was. A higher intake of ice cream was significantly associated with a lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes once again. But here's the thing, you wouldn't know that just from reading the research abstract. Both ice cream and yogurt were found to be linked to a lower chance of developing diabetes, but only yogurt is mentioned in the conclusion. Ice cream, once again, gets ignored. You would have to actually read through the research paper, which again, most people are not going to have the time or the willingness to do, to see these results. It really is starting to feel like a cover-up. The authors tried to explain away this finding about ice cream using the explanation of something called reverse causation. Reverse causation is a term used in research to describe when a result is caused by a change in a participant's behavior that makes it such that the original cause and effect association that you were looking for becomes kind of hard to measure. Let's look at a specific example that relates to these ice cream shenanigans. If you eat ice cream every day and then you get diagnosed with high cholesterol, you might start eating less ice cream and french fries and other things that you think are not good for you and then start eating more salads, more fruit, more things that are generally considered to be healthier for you in an effort to lower your cholesterol. Now let's say that some researchers come up to you and they want to collect data about your diet to see why you ended up with high cholesterol. If they were to collect data about you right then and there at that point when you started eating salads and fruits and other healthy stuff, they would then see that there's an association between those healthy foods 
and the high cholesterol. So this is a situation of reverse causation. But here's the thing. In this research paper, the authors did try to account for that. They did have a way of measuring when people may have changed their diets based on different health diagnoses. And even when they controlled for that, ice cream was still associated with a lower risk of type 2 diabetes. This finding was supported by more studies that came out in 2013, 2016, and 2019. The whole idea that ice cream could be healthy remained buried until around 2019 when a PhD student at Harvard named Artisan Korat presented his findings on the links between type 2 diabetes and dietary fat intake. Now, dissertations don't normally get turned into news headlines, but this one did. The Atlantic, the public broadcasting service, better known as PBS, and The Guardian all ran stories on this conundrum. Artisan Cora didn't simply publish more of the same research that people had been ignoring, no. Instead, he found something new and even more preposterous. That ice cream was also linked to a lower risk of heart disease. More specifically, he found that one cup of ice cream per day was linked to a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. It was already crazy to think that a high sugar food Food could be linked to a lower risk of type 2 diabetes, now what the data was suggesting was that a food that was high in saturated fat could be linked to a lower risk of heart disease. Side note, the whole idea that saturated fat causes heart disease has been disputed, but that is a different scandal for a different video. So the evidence at this point is pretty clear. Ice cream is linked to a lower risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease, but why? What is it in ice cream that could possibly be offering these health benefits? In the papers that I presented in this video, there are discussions of potential reasons how ice cream could confer some benefit, but nothing that's really clear or definitive. I also looked for expert opinions, and I did find an interview online by Darius Musafarian, who is a medical doctor and a doctor of public health who has been involved in this type of research. So taking all of that together, there are about three prevailing theories that I'll present to you now. One is that people who eat ice cream also engage in other behaviors that lower their risk for diabetes. Two is that people who avoid ice cream may engage in other behaviors that increase their risk for diabetes. Basically, theories one and two are saying that people who eat ice cream are different from people who don't eat ice cream in some way that we haven't really been able to identify yet. The third theory is that ice cream has benefits that are as of yet unknown to us. Perhaps the milk fat globule membrane or MFGM, which may help protect against high cholesterol, may be playing a role. This theory is hard to defend though because cream is also high in MFGM and it hasn't been linked to a lower risk of type 2 diabetes in the same way that ice cream has. Since this question is an open research question at this point that still needs answering, I'm going to present some of my own theories. My first theory has to do with the psychological effects of eating ice cream. So ice cream in general, I'd say is a fun food. When you think of ice cream, you think of summer ice cream trucks, being outside, sunshine, those sorts of things. So just taking that into consideration, ice cream could be something that is just associated with more happiness and less stress for people. Now I know that sometimes ice cream can be a sad food. It can be the thing that you reach for when you're alone on a Friday night and you're just watching a sad movie by yourself. But I think it's fair to say that generally ice cream is more of a happy food. My second second theory has to do with the fact that ice cream is more of a summer food. So very often when you have ice cream, it's after like walking around or being outside at a carnival or flying kites or just doing something outdoorsy, right? So after you have walked however many miles or played for however many hours, you're having this high sugar, high fat food. It ends up being just what your body needs in that moment. And that could be why you're not seeing a negative effect for ice cream because it's being consumed in that context. My third theory also has to do with the fact that ice cream is cold. And it's that because it's cold, you cannot eat too much of it. Unlike cookies, which you can take like a whole bag of or a whole bucket of or whatever container you want to use and just plop in front of the TV and eat and eat and eat and it never changes state. Ice cream changes state after a while. So you have to have enough wisdom to select only the portion that you can eat because if you take too much, let's say you have like a huge container, after a certain point, your ice cream starts to turn into a milkshake. 
and maybe you're okay with that but generally if what you wanted to eat was ice cream you're gonna take the portion that you need to take for it to stay as ice cream the whole time that you're eating it the fact that ice cream is cold also forces us to savor it because if you eat ice cream too fast what happens you get a brain freeze so you have to slowly consume this food which in a sense could be considered mindful eating so ice cream basically forces us to practice portion control and mindfulness. So that could be another reason. My fourth and last theory connects to the theories that I discussed earlier from the research papers. And that is that people who do indulge in ice cream might be different from those who avoid it. It's possible that people who are avoiding ice cream are avoiding fatty foods in general because they think that that's better for them, but that's actually not the case. As I briefly mentioned earlier, the whole fat is bad messaging has been disputed, but for a lot of people, that message still lingers in their minds to this day. Starting back in the 1950s, the American public was given the message that saturated fat causes heart disease. Considering that many participants in the research studies that were conducted in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s likely heard this message or grew up with their parents telling them not to eat too much meat or butter, it's possible that many of them as adults still had that message in the back of their minds. Shunning fat is actually not good for your health though. So it's possible that the ice cream eaters are the people who said, screw the dietary guidelines, I'm gonna enjoy my ice cream, full fat, not the low fat version. I'm gonna eat butter, I'm gonna eat steak, I'm gonna eat whatever I want, enjoy all the fat I want in all its normal healthy glory. And maybe that is what made the difference. Anyway, that is my take on the ice cream paradox. If you have any theories on the ice cream paradox, funny or serious, feel free to share them in the comments. I would love to read them. All right, take care.